Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our start 11 show for the game. Euro 2020 qualifier game against Denmark. I'm joined by Paddy Ward from the Republic of Ireland Sports Club in Mullingar. And I'm joined by Peter from thefootballfaithful.com. So, uh, yeah, lads, um, obviously a huge game. You can also check out our match preview that we did. But uh, I think an obvious choice in goal is Darren Randolph. Unless you're gonna no. go for the Bose man, no, uh, I don't think James Talbot, uh, or Sean McDermott. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we can disagree on that one. Since, yeah. since he's took the number one jersey, he's he's just he, as he's performed, and that's all we can ask. As you said, he got Player of the Year with ourselves the other night. Well deserved. Pulled off two great saves in the first two qualifiers mm. that guaranteed us the points. I think he's got four clean sheets in his last four games for Ireland, and he's got twenty clean sheets for Middlesbrough this season. So, I mean. That in itself speaks for itself. I think it's almost underrated. Like um, we spoke about Glenn Whelan in the last video, just you know, people just we just don't seem to appreciate our own players. Um, you know, mm. for me, he, he gets a Premier League uh, move after all this um, international things going. I think he's going to move to the Premier League, or he might move abroad. I don't know. But he's uh, def definitely the best keeper outside the Premiership, isn't he? Yeah, Absolutely. His, his distribution is excellent as well, which I think will be important in a big away game like that. You know. Um, he can really put it up and put it right up to the to the to the front man if he needs to, and yeah, very confident on the ball as well. Which is, you know, he's a bit of experience as well. He knows when to take the sting out of the game when you're under pressure as well. So I think he's he's a key player for us. Like yeah, yeah, no, he's a, quite, even especially with the the Danish because they they are they are a big strong side, especially the lads coming up from the back, and he's he is a presence. He's a big yeah. tall man. Yeah, yeah. Whereas when we had Shea, Shea was brilliant, but maybe didn't have the stature as such, height wise. Yeah. But Darren coming out, you're you're fairly confident that that he's going to make the ball. Yeah, and he and he usually gets to it. I mean, people blame him for some of the goals at the five one or something. Like Obviously, I from my own experience watching it, I didn't think he got a lot of protection. But sure, that's for a story for for a different day. We're going in here positive now. Obviously, as you mentioned, the saves he made against Gibraltar and he made a save didn't he against Georgia yeah, as well, yeah. which which was vital. So, as you say. They're, they're saves that won us points. Yeah. Like, that's probably four points that he saved on his own. That's the difference, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, that goes in against the ball. Even Mick said the other night at the awards, you know, if that goes in, you're probably looking at one of the worst results in our history. Absolutely. And especially, you're looking at a mix, mixed first game, all of a sudden it goes from everything is rosy and positive to, Jesus, what we have to do. Yeah. And I think if a win was was pivotal that that time, so thankfully got it. But uh, a left back, I think we can all agree on Ender Stevens. Yeah, top class season for Sheffield United. I think we're all looking forward to seeing him in the Premier League. How he adapts, um, yeah, re really impressive. Seems to seems to have everything you need as a as a modern fullback now. He's he's good going forward, good defensively, good engine, gets up and down the wing, and he he can whip a good delivery in if he if he gets up in around there. Uh, the final third, you know, so yeah, we're top top player. I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to seeing him in the Premier yes. next season. Yeah, and he finished with a lot of goals as well towards the end of the season to help Sheffield United get promoted. You, did you have anything to follow? Up no, on? just being very impressed with him so far. Yeah, but he um, doesn't look like you know the Ireland, Ireland international football phase. No, no and like he slot right in. Like he's another player that's come come through the League of Ireland. Yeah, and moved over, and like it, it does show that the potential is there for lads that are good enough to go over and make the step up. I yeah. think it's a credit to him as well that he went over to Villa originally, didn't really work out, had to drop down the leagues, and now he's kind of risen back up. Well, he had up, said so. that he didn't really take it as serious as he probably should have, so he learned yeah. from his mistakes, went to, I mean, he got the ports, but then yeah. came up through the leagues then. Um, so, you know, you got to give him credit. Uh, he's, he, he, he does put the work in now, and for me, as I say, he doesn't look phased by international football. And no, he just seems, right in. seems to be just a down-to-earth lad and... Is doing what he wants to do now yeah. and has learned from his mistakes as yeah. such. I think he's far better than um, Stephen Ward anyway. But uh, right back. I think, yeah, well, it's got to be Seamus for me. I mean, in the game that's in it, the, the experience needed, even the experience of, you throw Matt Doherty in, who's been superb this season, best Irish player um, for me this season in, in terms of league I don't think anyone would really disagree No, with that. no, no. No, he's, no, listen, he's the skipper. He's the leader on the pitch. No, he's not with Doherty. Oh, but yeah. Doherty, sorry, yeah. Well, that, like his performances speak for themselves, but as I said, Seamus, towards the end of the season, came back into the Everton side and, and done well. 
but I think it has to be Seamus mm. I think it's simply good, that leadership as well I think it's really good though for Matt Doherty that like he didn't get into the Premier League team of the year this season and there was people giving out and like it's a long time before we could say we were able to say well, that Seamus is the last one yeah, yeah, yeah. Mart- with Martinez and Everton mm. but yeah obviously I'm, I'm going with Seamus as well um, as I said I mentioned in the preview it's just is. is uh, experience is gonna be be the thing, and since he's came in, we well, played against Denmark. You know, we haven't conceded a goal against him. So uh, when he wasn't playing, we conceded five goals against yeah. him. So that's the way I look at it. Um, Matt Doherty is extremely unlucky to to miss out um, on that right back spot, but who knows? He might get into a team further up the field. <laughs> but uh, centre halves um, for me, Shane Duffy's an absolute shoe in. He's been excellent. He's Player of the Year for ourselves and Brighton. As as I, as I mentioned, he uh, for me had a very good season. Uh, he's a lot of goals as well. Yeah, he's a massive threat, isn't he? From from set pieces, I think. I think every Irish fan's kind of hoping yeah. a little bit for a Shane Duffy header. And plus, I think you know, you look at him. He play he plays very well for Brighton with Lewis Dunk. But one thing we're gonna need he's a re- he, he's a big presence back there. He, yeah. he re- you can see him pulling people into place. He's a leader, and it, it's gonna be. You know, you can talk about how oh, we want to see trouble. It's going to be backs to the walls at times out there on on Friday night. Yeah. And I think he's he's one of your men you want well, in the trenches. You know, I think they will they will start with the big man up top, Jorgensen, mm. and like Duffy is the man to match him up. Yeah, well, he away. needs someone to go to war, and I don't think yeah. anyone wouldn't not go uh, to war and not bring <laughs> Shane Duffy with you. I mean, he's man mountain. I think Paddy Power could be in trouble yeah. on Friday night as well. I think everyone will be on Duffy for yeah. a while. Oh, yeah, lumping on. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then you know this is where the the difficult one comes in. Do you go Kevin Long? Do you go John Egan? Or do you go Richard Kyo? Uh, my thoughts on it was Long just after the season he had up and he hasn't played any football. Um, yeah, a couple of weeks training with the senior lads. He's he's not an option. Um, personally, I'd like to see Egan play, but I, I don't believe he will. I believe Mick will go with Richard Kyo. Hmm. Seems to have a soft spot for him. He's played the, he's played the last two games, and in fairness, hasn't hasn't put a foot wrong. But my own preference would be to see see Egan play, but I don't think he will. Yeah, well, my only argument to what you're saying is Kyo has played, just came off playoff, albeit it didn't go his way, yeah. but he could be the fresher of the two. That would be my only argument to it. I personally would love to see Egan in there, but the, as the more kind of it's gone on in my head, I'm kind of thinking more Kyo and the fact that they're that's a pretty much settled back yeah. five if you think about it. Yeah. Um, that's the only reason I would go with it. I do think maybe. Um, I think maybe towards the end of next season, I think you'll start seeing maybe Kyo getting faded yeah. out and Egan being brought through. in. But they, as you say, it's different the way they play. It's more of a back three. So, yeah, I haven't seen much of uh, Egan in the back four. Yeah. So, that's the only thing that kind of puts me. Kyo is used to it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know very much. I think Kyo, like you said, and that would be also be the argument against Darty for a certain extent. To a certain extent, you want to settle back four going in there. People playing in their the positions they pay for their clubs almost. Duffy and Kyo played a couple of games together, um, now recently, and I I think Kyo has had a really good season. I thought he'd struggle under Lampard because Lampard wanted him to play a bit of ball out from the back, but he's actually had a really good. Did too bad against Leeds, did he? Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah, Kyo for me all day for that one, lads. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even really put it up to the debate. I, I don't, he's not really experienced enough, I don't think, Egan to come into that for, for this yet, nature yeah, in this yeah. game, you know. Although he's, he is getting, I think he's like 27 now. Yeah. He's another one like kind of who were him. He had know. a really bad injury as well. He was yeah. younger as well. Yeah, yeah. He was at Sunderland. Yeah, but well, he was, he, I think he's a fantastic yeah. player and obviously Captain Sheffield United to, um, to promotion as well. So he's kind of unlucky a bit like Matt Doherty in a sense because if you're kind of looking around for another player who probably performed very well himself, maybe Ian Stevens. Yeah. But, uh, the midfield three, I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it kind of picks itself from from the the last two games. Yeah, I think, I think it picks itself. The one, the one thing is, I think Whelan will will play simply to follow Ericsson around. Yeah. Um, I think if if they didn't have a player like Ericsson, I don't think Whelan would have played. I under Mick, because we're we're playing more football. I think Harry Arthur will eventually come in. I think he's a good ball player, whereas when we were playing uh, under Martin O'Neill and Roy, the ball was going over his head an awful lot more. Mm-hmm. Just from a football point of view, I'd like to see Arthur play more after after this game, but I think Whelan will play. Yeah, I I, I don't see I I, I like it. I kind of see 
and Mick might have said something contrasting to this, but I really don't see Glenn Whelan following Christian because Ericsson's a smart player. You get man marked, you move out to the wing and you create spaces for others. I don't see Glenn Whelan following out onto the wing. I think it'll very be much, they'll be marking the spaces that he comes into. Now, Whelan will be positioned in the most dangerous space in the centre between the lines as such. So, I, you know, it, it might look like he's man marking mm-hmm. him, but I think all three of them midfielders will have individual instructions to be very wary of where Christian mm. Eriksen well, is. Well, disciplined, yeah. Yeah, so, and, uh, yeah, but I agree, like, the, it, it picks itself pretty much. Yeah. Jeff Hendrick, I think Jeff Hendricks is, is a much better player when he's in that kind of box-to-box role yeah. than when he's well, been Well, even, I think he's, he's more, when he's supporting the attack, I think it's... Coming like, on to the ball, I think that's yeah. where he's best. And I think he's been, like, wheeling underutilised under previous managers, yeah, you know. So I don't think, he's not a number 10. No. Yeah. As such, he literally is a box-to-box He'll he'll get he'll get stuck into a tackle, and plus he can pick a pass. And we we need players like that. that will go box to box. I think a perfect yeah. example was the Wales game where he set up McLean with the goal with the yeah. tackle, getting the ball in the box, and we obviously scored from it. Um, just comes down down to the to the final three. I think you know I, we might as well come to the one that we we'll most likely agree on, and that's set a forward. Um, it's as we, this is a four three three formation mm-hmm. because apparently mix. You know, so that's what yeah, we want to yeah. try and make it realistic, but as well our own type. You yeah. know, um, David McGoldrick up top, it's yeah. fantastic. I think he he warranted it the game against um, Georgia. He didn't have a great game against Gibraltar, still set up a goal, but yeah, he was a real threat, and I think he was a breath of fresh air. He got stand ovation in the Viva coming off because he was just bollocks coming off. He ran his socks off. Yeah. And the chance he missed, remember, he kind of fell from around yeah. the goalkeeper, almost yeah. collapsed. Yeah. He was yeah. just out, out, of, out, of, out of out of juice altogether. Well deserved though, wasn't it? The ovation yeah. coming yeah. off, you know, he yeah. did work his socks off. Like he looks like the kind of player that, as you said, can pick a pass, can hold up the ball, and that's what I think. That's what we're going to need because we're going to need, yeah, we need the lads stick, either yeah. side of get it stuck and get them up, get them up and support. Yeah, I, I totally agree, and and as we said, we, we'd like to see him get a go. I think Irish fans are starting to get a bit of affection towards him. Yeah, you know, didn't have a club early on in the season, we, gets promoted to the championship, has a great season, scores scores really good goals. Yeah, you know, clever player, and uh, yeah, he's just the type of player that we want because we need the ball to stick up in their half, and the longer it's up in their half, obviously the more chances we have scoring. You know, um, out left, who would be a preferred option? Out of was it I know. McLean, Odelda, Brady? Yeah. It's probably the three on that I side. actually would like to see Robinson play. Oh, sorry, you said him uh, as well. Yeah. To be honest, I, McLean, he's great. He'll give you 100%. Give you 100% effort. He'll mill into tackles. He'll do the whole lot. But we need players up there, especially away from home like that, to be disciplined as well. James goes, in, goes into a tackle the first five minutes and gets a yellow card. You're nearly on tender hooks for the, the the next eighty five minutes, hoping he doesn't do the same thing again. Yeah, yeah, I I, I could see where you come from with that would be. So. Yeah, I I'd probably go for for McLean if I'm honest. I, I you know it's always a bit of a roller coaster <laughs> watching him play. I, I get that, but I I kind of I've been saying throughout. Um, I I just think this is this is a game for experienced heads. He does have experience. I think he puts in a massive shift up and down the wing. I know Mick's saying it's 4-3-3. I don't personally think it's going to be... I think it's 4-5-1 realistically, 4-3-3 when we're on the ball, maybe. Yeah. But it's going to be a day for everyone getting behind the ball a lot. And I think McLean, the, his work rate up and down. Um, he can be a frustrating player to watch because there's not really a, always end product. But I think our tactic will be to get the ball into the box and I think he, he'd be the right man to do that. I, I'd go McLean. But, but I would like to see them try somebody else against Gibraltar. Yeah. Give someone else a shot with a, with, a, with a view to maybe getting them into the team. But I don't think today is the day to be exper- Or Sorry, I don't think Friday is the day to be experimental. He's, he's one of our only forward players as well that has double digits in goals as well, I suppose. like We're talking about Callum Robinson. Hasn't scored yet six appearances. Mm. McGoldrick is the same eight nine appearances no goals mm. so we're talking about about playing them as you said McLean has that experience as well yeah I I, I would actually like to see Callum O'Dowd start on the left hand side um, he's spoken you know glowingly about him in the in the past mm-hmm. and how he missed him against Gibraltar and, and Georgia you know a goal score had a really good run of games you know um, with, with goals so I think for me I would just personally like to see O'Dowd start there I think McLean had a very poor season. I know he ups his game for for, mm. for the Irish team, and I wouldn't be, you know, pulling my hair out if 
if he was to start, you know, I, I do feel he could do that disciplined job on the left, as you said. Um, but me personally, I would like to see O'Dowda uh, on that left hand side. I'd kind of be similar. I wouldn't be pulling my hair out either if O'Dowda was picked. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, I, I like, I, I really like watching him. I think he's got a, a kind of touch of class that a lot of Irish players yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, so I, but I, th- I think I know what you mean is that you don't want to be experimenting in such a big game that you need to get a positive result out of. So I can see what you're saying about McLean. So the, it's up to you now who we're going with. Yeah, well, I was I was going to talk about a doubt of playing, playing the, the other side and switchy, switchy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're talking about McLean, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll go McLean. Obviously, because of the experience and the previous goal scoring record, which we wouldn't have with Robinson and obviously with McGoldrick as well. So just for the experience, we'll go try and stick with the experience, go for McLean. Okay, so that's McLean. So that leaves us with our right hand spot. And I'm just going to try a spanner in the works. So I'm going with Matt Doherty right, right wing forward. Yeah, I'm in that club 100%. Yeah. I, gave a pretty, I gave a pretty good argument from the preview, so make sure you watch that. But yeah. I actually think, so what I was saying earlier, I think this is the perfect time to bring him in. I would play him uh, ahead of Seamus Coleman in a big away games because I think you need that. Two players that are, that are thinking defensively when you're going to be under the cosh. And he's a real threat going forward as well. All, you know, his... His, his standout performances for Wolves have all been in, a, in an attacking sense. So you could almost say to him, just pretend you're playing wing back, Matt, you know, and just stay in front of Seamus. I think it's the perfect game, uh, the perfect game to, yeah, to go well, with that. Well, I was thinking as well, when you guys were talking about Callum O'Dowda starting, I was thinking of starting on the, the opposite side. Obviously, Robbie Brady it's started a, it's, the it's, last it's, game. It's more realistic to what Mick would probably do, yes. Yeah, because I think, like, he hasn't had a good season, Robbie. He's, he's had injuries, he hasn't been playing. And a lot of the time he was in the team for his deliveries. And now we've got and Kiko Horan. Yeah, yeah. So like his his niche as such is isn't there to guarantee him the spot in the team. Mm-hmm. But as you two were saying, maybe this is the time to give Doherty and Coleman up the right another another chance. Mm-hmm. Or he could go at Ron Curtis as well. Yeah. People forget that he's in that squad. Yeah, he's may- been quite quiet as well. Maybe, maybe. I wouldn't like I said, I wouldn't be upset in any sh- way, shape or form if O'Dowd was given a run out. Yeah. My personal preference was that I, I've always thought this we have an issue here, two of our best players going for right back. The perfect time to get them both on the pitch on the right hand side is big away games. And I think this falls perfectly into it because there's just like you know, we go and get say we get a draw, which I think people would snap their hands off yeah. now, despite saying we're going there to win. We beat Gibraltar, we're on ten points. Um Switzerland are off in the Nations League. So Denmark say they beat Georgia, I think, on ho- at home on Monday. Um, we'll be going into the Switzerland game with a six-point lead on them. Granted, they have games in hand, but like that's a really strong position. You'd almost be saying, when we beat them there, they're, you're putting them under serious pressure. you know. So Are we saying then, let's put the speculation, just get rid of the speculation then, we played already, and the whole Gibraltar thing is forgotten about the conditions and blah, 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 and let's see what they can do. Yeah, I, like, I thought it was a bit... Mick, Mick's very straight talking, but like he pretty much said, nah, that didn't work, won't be trying yeah. that again. I thought, you know, on, but on the other hand, everyone's saying, oh, but the condi- nobody played well, really. Like, yeah, you know, I don't think it was. A, but Doherty himself said yeah. he was, you know, prepared to be, you know, he's trained as if he's going to play regardless. Look, I have to say, though, I, like I remember moving from, from like left back further forward or, or right back when I was younger, and it is quite a big adjustment because when you're playing left or right back, you're constantly coming onto the ball, you can yeah. see the whole pitch. So then you go from kind of taking the ball, at, standing sideways, or even with your back to goal, and like if you're only if you're not doing it all the time and getting a regular run at it, it can throw you off the first couple yeah. of times you do it. So I can understand why. I think either of them would struggle with the move forward a little bit, but yeah. I don't think we're really looking for them to. Like that was a different game. That's when we were the instigators. I don't think we're the instigators in this game, and that's why I think it's perfect. But yeah, I just think if if that's what we're going to go with, we're going to go with Matt Doherty on one side and Callum O'Dowd on the other. Gives great options for delivery into the box for obviously McGoldrick, who was a big strong lad. And then also Jeff Hendrick and Horan coming onto the ball as well because I do think Whelan will 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 sit. Whelan or will the, sit. Or the other winger in the far post. Yeah, well. yeah. Um. So final answer. Right, we'll go Dowda, Matt Hardy, and McGoldrick. So left, right, and centre that's forward. That's our. That's, that's, our, that's what I'm thinking. We we'll run through them. Darren Randolph. Yeah. Enda Stevens, Richard Kyo, Shane Duffy, Seamus Coleman, um, Glenn Whelan as our centre defensive midfielder, 
um, Hurahin and then Hendrick. And then up front, we're going to go with um, out left. We had Callum O'Dowda. Callum O'Dowda, right? Or I voted two on one. <laughs> and then we had David McGoldrick. And then out right, I think it's a full clean sweep for Matt Dardy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there you have that's been our stand 11 let us know your stand 11 in the comments as always we love to it's a great debate and we always love to hear what your stand 11 will be some would argue that you know Doherty should be you know left maybe to come on at a later later point and others will say you know Egan should start ahead of Kyo so be interesting to let know what your thoughts are let us know as always don't forget to subscribe huge thanks to the lads for coming on and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already check out psfootballfaithful.com and uh, don't forget to check out um, Public Foreign Supporters Club in Mullingar if you're from that way. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll speak to you soon. Come on, you boys in green.